My name is Dr. Terry Janke and I lead a team of lawyers and consultants who work on Indigenous cultural and intellectual property and we help our clients create and prosper. I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands that I'm speaking on today, the Awabakal people. And I'd also like to acknowledge the traditional owners of all the lands that I'm beaming out to today and your country. I'm a Wadithi and Merriam woman. I was born in Cairns and I'd like to acknowledge my ancestors, uh, Wadithi and Merriam. And I live in Sydney in Bidjigal country, so I pay my respects to Bidjigal traditional owners. We look forward to working with Indigenous communities and hearing their feedback so that we can write the Indigenous Cultural and Intellectual Property Community Guide to help you assert your rights to your Indigenous cultural and intellectual property and that can make a better future for your future generations. So the team is working with the University of Newcastle to develop Indigenous cultural and intellectual property protocols which will be uh, leading the way that staff, students and all those engaged deal with Indigenous cultural and intellectual property. And also, as an Australian first, the university is going to produce a community guide which will inform Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander communities that they work with on what their rights are and how their knowledge and arts and cultural expression will be used in the university context. So our brief is to draft this Indigenous Cultural and Intellectual Property Protocol and we've been working already with the staff and students and then now to add the piece for advising the community we're going to build a corresponding community guide. So the guide will uh, explain what is Indigenous Cultural and Intellectual Property is. So Indigenous cultural and intellectual property rights are Indigenous people's rights to their cultural heritage. So it is a term that came out of a report about 20 years ago, Our Culture, Our Future, but it is, includes all those things Indigenous people need to express their connection to country and to each other. It is part of their identity. So it's linked to people, land, identity and place. And I'm showing it here in a, um, a circle because they're all interconnected. So there's literary performing and artistic works. So that's stories, songs and art coming from country. Documentation of Indigenous people. That's records or already um, films, writings about Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. Then there is traditional knowledge. That includes traditional knowledge and ecological knowledge from many years of living on country. Indigenous people have uh, an intricate relationship with land and the things on it, the plants and the animals. So how that is being used by universities now for new medicines or for managing the environment is an important thing to consider. And then there's also cultural objects, the belongings of Indigenous people that have been collected over time, previously called artefacts, but these cultural treasures are being repatriated to Indigenous people, but also the knowledge of their uh, cultural practices are important. For example, possum skin cloaks collected many years ago, now being used by Indigenous people to revitalise that practice. Then there's actually physical sites, the tangible cultural property, that's places, sites, and not just sacred sites, that is the physical environment, which is important for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. So how that gets used in terms of the research base is important to consider. The next one is ancestral remains and the return of our ancestors who have been scattered all around the world for scientific research is an important part of ICIP. Lastly, there's languages. And languages, there were over 250 languages spoken on contact and now still some spoken but many are sleeping and being revitalised through lots of research and questions arise about who owns copyright, for example, in a dictionary that uses living speakers' knowledge of uh, the words and the cultural uh, knowledge associated with that become important things to consider in terms of Indigenous people having rights to own control and maintain their cultural practices. So how is this all connected? Well, as I said, linked to people, land and identity. 
So they are represented here in a circle to show that it is communally owned and living and about culture. And it's constantly evolving. Don't assume that there was a point in time that Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander knowledge became public domain or freely available. It is constantly evolving and connected, handed down through the generations as well, staying within the uh, clan or the group. There's roles and responsibilities as well to look after that knowledge and pass it on to future generations. And that could involve protocols and customary laws about how that is to take place. Consultation and consent processes have always been part of these customary laws and protocols that Indigenous people have had throughout many generations. So it might be, you know, men's or women's business. People can realise um, that as an example and things that are sacred being protocols. But it is also just about who is the person with authority to speak and, you know, respecting the origin of that community or that clan or that group when the knowledge is used. And cultural connections remain forever. And that is unlike copyright laws that will end, for example, 70 years after the death of a author of a report. These cultural connections remain forever. So Indigenous cultural and intellectual property rights have to have a long-term plan. So this is an opportunity for Indigenous communities Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander communities all over Australia to consider how they want their heritage to be used and it can set up things for the future that have never been in place before. So it offers a really, really good opportunity. So the guide will aim to enable an understanding of the IP laws and also enlighten you on these Indigenous cultural and intellectual property protocols which are gaining traction internationally and it will also enable agreement making and collaborations and for those to be fair and equitable and to set standards across Australia on what is acceptable. The guide hopes that it will be uh, an opportunity for all communities to build on this uh, knowledge base and therefore strengthen their own internal protocols. So whilst these protocols are very general in nature, communities themselves should be developing their own protocols in terms of their own uh, local uh, protocols and uh, what they're managing in terms of their land and knowledge and languages. And in that way, it's a continuing cultural practice that uh, ensures greater cultural production and a, a greater st uh, stake of any benefits that arise from the use of culture. Mm -hmm.